guys. I got a virgin pina colada and I'm sitting here waiting on an Angus burger and just sitting at a really nice cafe, just chilling. I just arrived. My flight was really, really late. So my evening is pretty much a bust. Um, but I, I think there's a night market that's open till midnight. So I'm going to try to check that out if it's open. This guy's letting let people out the car on the sidewalk. Let's watch him ride on the sidewalk. There you go. I guess if you're driving a Maybach, you can drive down the sidewalk. But then the Toyota comes right behind it. This sidewalk is actually extremely busy. It's been about 15 cars that came down the sidewalk. So of course, because this is the capital city, it's a lot more chaotic and hectic. Um, the traffic is insane. You should, I mean, coming from the airport, when I was in Da Nang, the airport was like 10 minutes away, five minutes away from the hotel, because it's not that big. And here it took, it was supposed to take about 20 minutes. It took about 45 minutes because of the traffic. So in Vietnam, the sidewalk is not only a road because they drive on the sidewalk, but it's a parking lot too. There's nowhere to park on the street. So the motorbikes park on the sidewalk. And the problem is when you try to walk on the sidewalk, you usually have to wind up cutting into the street, which can be dangerous because the sidewalk is completely taken with either motorcycles or vendors or cars to drive on the sidewalk. In this area of Ho Chi Minh, there's a lot of high-end hotels like the Ritz-Carlton and the Waldorf. And then, of course, all your stores, Gucci, Louis Vuitton, Chanel, Dior, yada, yada, yada. That's a beautiful building. Don't know what it is. I just picked this up off the ground. This smells so good. So they have these in Thailand. In Thailand, they call them Lila Wadi which is a plumeria in the United States. And they smell awesome. I'm in this park. I think that's Ho Chi Minh. And there's a lot of people out. Look at those beautiful lotus flowers. So it's actually a very beautiful park. And like the center, people are with their kids, they're playing games. Uh, just chilling, walking. Can't quite remember how to get back to my hotel, except for I know that I took a right at Gucci and then a right at Chanel. So there's Chanel. Just gotta find Gucci and I'm making my way back. This is a nice square. They're selling ice cream, cotton candy. People are playing tacky sack. I don't know what they're doing, selling, I think it's food and drinks, toys, and a lot, a lot of people. Okay, hey, I'm in the big market, the Bintan market. I just got here, I sat down to have a Coke. But um, I'm in here, gonna look around, they're kind of aggressive. I mean, you can't even walk past without, look, 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 madame, 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 look. And I saw my first, my first big old rat run by. That's a given, I guess. I'm buying fresh coffee for my cousin, the beans. But look at the cashews. They look good, don't they? I think they grow them in Vietnam. And there's different kinds. Oh, the cashew with skin. Very nice. So 100 grams is not a whole lot. 45,000 dong. Uh, I have to tell you what that is. After. Okay, let me tell you. It's hard. Now, I consider myself a hardcore shopper. I hope you can hear me. But that Bintan market? No. It's hot as hell in there. Plus, the 
for high pressure sales, you cannot walk anywhere without not only being asked to look and buy something, but actually physically grab and they will stand in front of you so you can't walk past. It, it's just annoying and outrageous. I bought a couple little things and I had to leave. I, I, the hell with that. I like to shop, but that was a bit much. So I am gonna go over to a place called Saigon Square. It's a little higher priced. You still got a bargain. And um, the stuff is nice over there, but you know, the prices are a little higher, but the sales aren't as high pressure. I mean, you cannot walk anywhere without somebody trying to sell you a smoothie, some coffee, some cashews. And then I'm sitting here getting, I'm having a coconut, see? And I'm getting ready to have some wok fried beef noodles. But this guy walked up from the street and asked me, did I want my shoes shine? I got on Converse. <laughs> so there's my wok fried beef noodles. They look good. I don't have a fork, I got chopsticks and a spoon. Okay, so I made it back to my room. I am sweaty all over again. I had came back, cooled off, went back out, and now I'm sweaty as I don't know what. Did some more shopping, done with shopping. They are extremely aggressive and it is very annoying. You buy one thing, they want to try to push you to buy more and they keep showing you things. Well, what about this? Well, what about that? Come on, come on, you buy, you buy more, you buy more. No, no, if I wanted it, I would buy it. But anyway, what I wanted to say was, this particular hotel, and it, it's, a, it's a nice hotel, but they got some kind of way to turn your air off from downstairs. So every time you come back to your room, you have to ask them to cut your air back on, which is like really, really weird. And then today, luckily when I came back, I'm sitting in the chair doing some paperwork and my door opens and a family of three walks in and I'm like, hello? So evidently someone in the front desk gave them my room key instead of theirs, which is across the hall. Thank goodness that I was in here. So when I went down, the one guy, and granted, this may be a language barrier because he was like, my bad. And I'm like, excuse me? <laughs> so then the lady came over and she could speak really good English. And she was like, please accept my apologies. It was my mistake. I gave them the wrong key. You know, thank you for understanding, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, okay, all right. It is a hot one today, guys. I got my fan, but it means nothing. It is smoking hot. I'm gonna head back to my hotel, cool off, clean up, uh, get something to drink, and then go to the war museum. Okay, so I made it back to my hotel room and I am trying to cool off in this AC. And I'm just sitting here counting my money. So, this is $31,000. $31,000. What would this buy? I can buy two cans of Coke and have some change left over. $31,000 or 31,000 dong, Vietnamese dong, is $1.33 in US dollars. That is insane. It is extremely cheap here in Vietnam. So that's the little money. This, so this I got two, wait, one, two, three, 70, I got 400,000, 400,000 dong. $17 and 20 cents in US dollars. Um, so I'm debating whether I need to go to the ATM because my taxi is probably going to be about 110,000 dong. I want to go to the War Museum. I think that's 30,000 to get in. Um, and then I want to eat dinner and buy probably some more Coke or some ice. So I probably do need to go to the ATM, but taking exchanging 100 US dollars 
got me three million, I don't know, five hundred thousand dollars. It, it's insane. In terms of the shopping, I bought several dresses, quite a bit, and a pair of shorts, um, a top and pants set, t-shirt, silk scarves, and a belt for my son. When you go to these markets overseas, they know that Europeans, Americans, they know we go in a store, we see the price tag, we choose whether we want to buy it or not, we buy it and we leave. So you have to negotiate. So the prices usually are five to maybe 10 times more than what that item is worth and what you should pay for it. So the general rule people say is to start at least 50% of the price. Depending on what country you're in, some vendors are more strong-willed, should I say, that's a good word, than others. And it's hard to get them to budge to an acceptable amount. So let's say the dresses that I bought, they were like $8, $10, and that was way too much. I paid way too much for a dress. And, I, and you think, $10 for a dress? That's not, that's like good money, right? But no, it's too much. But here's the thing. Negotiations can take 30 minutes, 45 minutes, if you find somebody that really ain't trying to let you have nothing. So when you think about it, they probably paid 50 cents, a dollar for that dress that I paid $8 for, $10 for, they made a huge profit by selling it to me for that amount. But they're gonna whine and, and oh no, I cannot. And, and you know, act like you hurt their feelings and, you know, poke their lips out and act like little kids and, and even beg you, come on, please, please, just give me 10,000 more, please. I really need it, I haven't had any sales today. I got hungry kids at home. You know, they're going to give you the whole story. <laughs> so, you have all of that high pressure coupled with it's hot as I don't know what in there. You're sweating bullets. It's crowded. People are walking past you, pushing. The space is really small that you're standing in. Um, and you, you just want to go. So, you cut yourself short by doing quick negotiations. Me, I'm impatient. I'm not gonna stand there 30 minutes and negotiate with you about that dress because there's another dress down there I want. There's something else down there I want. So can you imagine 30 minutes here, 30 minutes there, 30 minutes there? Man, that'll be your whole day and you will be highly agitated and have a really bad headache by the time you leave. So I'm just letting you know that if you're a patient person, good for you because, and you got good bargaining skills, good for you because you can get some really great deals. Yeah, you can get some really good deals on well-made clothes, beautiful items for your home, for you, electronics. Just, I mean, the selection is amazing. So, Sharpen up your bargaining skills at home before you go overseas to an Asian country. Bring an extra suitcase and be prepared to buy some really good things. Just don't pay too much, like me. Hey guys, okay. I just got back from the War Remnants Museum. Used to be called the War Crimes Museum of American and Chinese War Crimes or whatever. They changed the name of it to make it a little bit more palatable. I can honestly tell you that I have never had such an emotionally gripping experience in a museum. I cried like a baby. My heart, <laughs> it was heavy. And it hurt, it really hurt. And 
Then my sadness turned into anger. Anger because we lost so many Americans, so many kids went over there and were killed. People came back messed up in the mind with no support proper from the government to uh, basically, bottom line, a war that we should have never been involved in. It wasn't our fight to fight. The articles, the images, very graphic, okay? Very, very graphic. Executions, murders, um, all of the tortures they that were journalized were being shown. The bodies, the blood, the brains, the blown apart bodies from landmines, the burns from the Agent Orange and the napalm, all of that that was cataloged or journalized in photographs is being shown. And they were all given by Americans or the United States government. Um, the museum was fascinating and very thorough in the sense that <clears throat> there were American helicopters, planes, tanks, all of the weaponry we use from guns to um, bomb shells to uh, landmines to um, grenades. I mean, every weapon that we use that I don't know how they got it, whether we left it or I don't think we donated it, but usually when we invade and we have all these tanks and all of a sudden, we just leave it when we're done. Then there was rooms full of photographs of the effects of Agent Orange and Napalm on um, the Vietnamese people. And not only the first generation, but subsequent generations, all the way up to fourth generations of birth defects and um, mental, uh, you know, retardation. And, and I know that's not the right word to use. I just couldn't think of the right word at the moment. And also not just in the Vietnamese, but also from American soldiers that were exposed to Agent Orange and their children being born with birth defects and the parents dying of cancers and whatnot from exposure. Um, this museum is phenomenal. I will say that if you don't, if you come to Vietnam and you don't plan on coming to Ho Chi Minh, AKA Saigon, just for that museum, I would make sure that you put this as a stop on your list, even if it's an overnight stop, and go to that museum if you like history because it is just absolutely phenomenal. And yes, this museum is based on one perspective, the Vietnamese perspective, the perspective of the people that the United States invaded. And so, you know, their perspective may be a little... Um, skewed to Americans, but I can say this, that the things that they showed were undeniably accurate because they were released by the United States government. They were published in our newspapers. They were um, taken to our courts for war crimes, especially on that one village, uh, my, La my Lay, or when we went in there and just massacred all of those villagers just because and tried to cover it up until one of the journalists busted the United States, actually through the Cleveland Plain Dealer, was the first newspaper to run the story and the photographs of what we did and of, of these soldiers that were ordered to go in there and just murder and rape and and disembowel and just do all kind of horrible things to children and women and people that didn't have anything to do with anything it it was just it was horrific and 
as a veteran myself, and that's why I'm still talking about it, um, rather than just giving you a quick synopsis, but as a veteran myself and working with other veterans that have been or had served combat time in Vietnam, it gives me a different perspective on just the whole war in itself. You know, veterans came back from the war and didn't have the support of the government, even though, you know, they were sent over there to fight, the government kind of just ignored them, especially black Americans. They have a, they had a poster up um, where Muhammad Ali said, why should I go to Vietnam and fight the yellow man? He said, the yellow man ain't never called me the N word. I'm gonna stop talking about it. All I can say is I highly recommend this experience. It is emotionally gripping. Um, you be prepared, bring you some Kleenex. If you have any kind of heart about humanity, bring you some Kleenex because you are gonna ball. The museum was 40,000 dong to get in, which is $1.75. In terms of Saigon, Ho Chi Minh City, do I recommend visiting? I was ready to go yesterday. Um, and so three days was my time frame here, three and a half days. And it was a little too much for me. Maybe I got spoiled by going to Da Nang first. Um, da Nang just had more charm. And, you know, I really like being able to sit at the little roadside cafe in the little chairs, drink some coffee, watch people watch. Da Nang had a lot more character, and I heard that the cities of Hoi An and Hue are actually even better than Da Nang. So when I do come back, that's where I'll be headed. It, it's just too chaotic, crowded, seems like it's kind of focused on materialism. The food ain't all that good. So, I so as a traveler, everybody has different things that they're looking for, different things that they want to do, that they want to see, that they find enjoyment from. So I can't just say don't come here just because I particularly don't really care for it. Um, just keep an open mind. I cared more for the local feel, the rural. It wasn't rural, but it wasn't big city feel. And this big city is different than Bangkok. It's not the same type of big city that um, I've been getting used to living in Bangkok. So, you know, keep an open mind. And if you do come, like I said, just make sure that you visit that war crimes or no war crimes. <laughs> war Remnant Museum. Like I said, it used to be called the War Crime Museum and it probably should be still. And um, with that said, I hope you enjoyed this little video. Take care, guys, and keep moving. Bye.